Now we'll do a little q and I'll answer all your questions the best of my ability, and we'll go from there. That's it. So thanks a lot. See you on the next one. All right, comments. Favorite part of the day. Favorite part of the show, I should say. Let's see. And everybody, uh, now. which for some reason is not loading. Uh, so get your questions going. Ah, there we are. Vicky, thank you. Not financial, legal, or tax advice. We should really do this in the beginning, I think. Uh, this channel is for entertainment purposes only. Dan's not an expert. These are Dan's opinions. Please inform your own Dan research. <laughs> All right. Chris Brunger says, hey, Rob, will there be a DCA for this week with James and Ben? There will be a DCA. That'll be next Monday, and it'll not be with me and Ben. It'll be with uh, James and whoever he's got. I think he's got CTO and uh, Banter, Rand, Crypto Banter guy. So, yeah, that's what's going on. And, again, I mean, we talked about this. I guess I've talked about it again. So I stepped down uh, because it was just time. It was time to step down and let other people do their thing. And I know people told me that, uh, you know, hey, you know, James is, you know, have a little health issue and we already talked. I mean, well, I, I just texted him this, this morning. We talked yesterday, the day before then. So everything's good. It's just, I just want to step away. Ben's got his 20th kid on the way or something. So he's got to step away holidays and stuff. And, and that's it. I got a lot of things going on. So like that was out of my wheelhouse. That's it. <laughs> no, man, we want to get the, the story on the fall with DCA. Everybody wants to hear a story. And it wasn't. And uh, it's the same thing with like when George was on the show, Cryptos Are Us. George had three freaking channels. And he was doing three, like he just started doing like two streams a day. Now he does three streams a day. And he just couldn't, it was just too much. And that's it. That's all. So low IQ. I love this. Low IQ. Great question. Is Grayscale Bitcoin Trust safe or should we sell? My thing is this. I don't even know why people are into it, you know? I mean, <laughs> Here's the thing. The whole thing is if you get the Bitcoin ETF and you're getting at a negative 43%, that's a huge discount. If a Bitcoin ETF gets approved, then it skyrockets, right? It works. Sorry, Gary Gensler. But the SEC likes to, likes to silence me every so often. I'm just kidding. The Wi-Fi is all jacked up here in Puerto Rico sometimes. And I just don't understand why people have it. Like if you have exposure, low IQ, like in, in everybody's smart enough to be able to custody their own crypto. It's imperative. And I've on my website, Dan teaches crypto, I show you how to do it. It's like three videos. They're all like seven minutes a piece, super simple. So like to me, there's no reason, unless you are a huge corporate entity and just don't want to deal with it, then I get that part. But if you just, you know, Joe blow off the street, you're smart enough to do it. If I'm smart enough, I'm an idiot sometimes. I can get it. You can get it. Let's see. Sebastian says, streaming on Wi-Fi. So, yes, I'm streaming on Wi-Fi. Sometimes I have a direct connection. Even the direct connection drops off because that's just how it goes. Let's see. <laughs> Straight are they? <laughs> Rob was my real estate and financial advisor. I told Beardy to buy a ton of EOS and Ravencoin. And I think it's working out pretty well. Also, BitConnect. Let's see. Glitchy McGlitchison. Yeah. Yeah, most of the time, like even right, like yesterday, I had a uh, direct connection. Just how it is. Mm. <laughs> Sheena told George is one of the channels. So here's a great question. Uh, hey, Dan, hold up from Portugal. Uh, what crypto do you think people should hold for 2023 for some good gains? Well, first of all, I don't think we're going to have a lot of gains in 2023. But if we do, I think the safest, if you look historically, uh, Bitcoin does okay in a bear market, not like the greatest thing. If you want like 10x, 100x, you're not going to get it in Bitcoin, sorry. But take a look at, um, at Chainlink. In the last long extended bear market. Chainlink was one of those crypto projects that pumped pretty hard during a bear market. And again, 
everything really needs, not everything, but if you want to have outside data pulled into the blockchain, because it can't just be done, it needs an Oracle, Chainlink's your one. And uh, that's a pretty good one. I, and I hold that right now. I sold it in the, in the bull run, but I always keep a little. I've been reaccumulating. It's one of the ones that I dollar cost average. Also, I dollar cost average Polygon. And also, I dollar cost average some uh, layer ones. And of course, Bitcoin as well. So like, I think there's more pain ahead, but I'm not smart enough to time the markets uh, perfectly. I know we're going to go down probably in 2023, but uh, I'll just accumulate. And then maybe hopefully in 2025, six or seven, we see some more blow off tops. Who knows? I don't know. That's it. Good question. <laughs> this is a good one. Leonard's Burzen says, hey, I don't know, essentially perfectly all laid out like that, but there is a quite a big concentration of Bitcoin. And we can take a look right here da, 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 in the Bitcoin treasury. And you can just see, let's see, that totals for the ETFs that own Bitcoin, it's almost 4%. If we take a look at private companies, that's 1.5%. So let's just do some quick math. Four, 1.5, okay, it's like, that's like 5.5%. For 1%, that's 7%. And uh, yeah. So, I mean, right now you're looking at uh, 7% is uh, pretty centralized. Let's be honest. It is. However, if we take a look at wallets and things like that, which you can find over here, look into bitcoin.com we can break this down by charts and look at bu, 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 bu. i must have passed it ah addresses with more than one balance i mean we're at an all-time high however take it with we're at almost a nine hundred fifty nine thousand. yeah almost a million so, I mean, the 100K, I can kind of see it because take this with a grain of salt too. Because remember, like I've got five different wallets and they've all got more than one Bitcoin in it. So uh, I am part of that equation. Take it with a grain of salt. It is what it is. And um, I think as time goes on, hopefully it becomes a little bit more decentralized. And I think what, one of the things I need to do myself personally is stop talking about the price of Bitcoin and start talking about Satoshis and just talking about how much you can, how many Satoshis you can get for a buck? That'd be a good question, actually. And I'm going to go off on a tangent. I don't want to do that. So hope I answer your question. I think there's, it's a lot more decentralized than, uh, oh, I don't know, say like a uh, regular fiat currency. Uh, let's see. Rob, what's your catch on gaming studios? Blockchains, for example, Finesse, Ultra, Vulcan, Forge. Um, I think if you're looking for like real utility, which is what will drive adoption. Um, gaming is probably one of the bigger ones out there. I mean, let's be honest. When you're playing a game and you want to level up whatever it is, you need an NFT. And for NFTs, you got to buy those things and those you can sell off. So for me, when I take a look at it, like a Gala Games or something like that, or like uh, Gensou Kishi, which again, I hold both of those because I'm biased. I take a look at those and go, that's probably one that uh, will do pretty well and actually has real world utility. So as far as gaming studios, and also another thing I like about Polygon is that they have Polygon Studios. They're taking Web 2 uh, applications and games and, and pulling them into Web 3. And Gensokishi was one of those. Gensokishi uh, has been out for, I don't know, eight years on various platforms, Switch, PlayStation, Android, and iOS. And they switched over to uh, blockchain and they were built on Polygon. So again, when I take a look at those, I'm like, those will probably do quite well. Because if you got a bunch of, a huge amount of gamers and they want to do whatever they do, I'm not, obviously not a gamer. But what do they want to do? They're going to need to use those things. And I always think, I always thought that gaming would probably lead the way. <laughs> Rookie numbers and the likes. Yeah, we've, we've flatlined a little bit in this, uh, on the show. Not getting as many uh, views as we used to in the bear market or the bull market, if that's okay. I don't, I like the people that are here now because I don't have to deal with the, the ridiculous comments. 
uh, about everything's going to the moon, everything's gonna be awesome, and da da da. People are just realists here. So thanks for being a realist and just thinking to yourself that hmm, maybe it won't go up forever. Maybe I should hedge my bet. Maybe I should do other things. Uh, that's uh, that's uh, it helped me out a lot. Okay. I don't know what that one. Yeah. Anyone can buy Bitcoin? Okay. <laughs> uh, so Gustavo says, Hey, Robert, does it bother you signing smart contracts like ETH or Binance coin sites connecting your MetaMask without knowing for sure what you're signing? It bothers me. But another thing you have to remember is that uh, I have far less than 1% of my MetaMask wallet because I'm always under the assumption it'll get hacked. That's always my assumption. My assumption is that the things that I interact with and do things with is that at some point I'm gonna mess up. So far I've been doing pretty good. So yeah, it bothers the hell out of me, but uh, this, is, this is the things for being a pioneer in this space. You're going to lose, you're going to lose big. So for me, I just have to minimize that losses, minimize the losses by following the rules. Everything's a scam, all that stuff and uh, just, try to keep a lot of things off of a hot wallet. Why would you put it in a hot wallet? I mean, a lot of it's dumb. Yeah, five wallets more. Yeah, exactly. I try to spread things around. And then of course, the question is, I can't bring this up. Um, diversification, Rob diversify. What do you divert? Yeah, so again, diversification is quite simple for me. Um, Mostly it's a bunch of cash. This is my, my wheelhouse, about a quarter cash. 1% is stables, MetaMask, whatever you want to call it. 5% is a degen play. And that's actually lower now because those projects are, are going down uh, because they're degenerate plays. 4% is Masterworks, again, buying fractionalized shares of art pieces. And I'm going to have the CEO on again pretty soon. Actually, I'm going to have uh, this, not the CEO, the uh, uh, chief investment officer. Uh, Alan Sokolitsky, uh, coming up next week. So the question that I'm going to have for him is safety. Safety and trust. I think that's a big question. 5% of land, 35% is uh, properties, Amazon business, staking. And, and this is just staking, staking. Like I also have, this is on top of my crypto portfolio. Crypto, uh, an IRA is 1%. I got some things in equities. So yeah, that's, hope that answered your question there. Oh yeah, cornucopias. Great project. Rob and the gang. I like those guys. Uh, hey, Rob, is is it likely by See, shouldn't trust me. And that's why my Wi-Fi goes out. You shouldn't trust me because you have to verify it, right? Don't trust verify. So as far as like CZ going, we're good, we're good. We got a proof of reserves. That's great, a proof of reserves. You can show me how much you got. But I got to tell you, uh, that would have been pretty good for Voyager to show proof of reserves. But, you know, they loaned out $640 million to Three Arrows Capital. So proof of reserves, proof of liability, and a little more open structure, probably what I'd like to see. But I don't trust any of the exchanges anymore. It's just it's a recipe for disaster. Thank you, Ben. I appreciate it. Or Jen. d -Gen. That's funny. d -Gen. Good one. Thank you, Meme. Wen Lambo. After 2025, probably. Uh, let's see. Rob, I'm with you from October 2021, but did not sell when must have. And I'm almost at the prices of now all my coins. Yeah, man. DCA is a king. Thanks a lot. You're welcome, Nick. And I hope we all learned a, a valuable lesson. I learned my lesson in 2018 when I didn't sell. I listened to everybody and their stupid comments about uh, diamond hands forever. Moron I am. And then I kind of wised up and I figured out, well, maybe I should take some profits on the way because then we took when we went, nobody went broke taking profits. And here we are. And um, yeah, that's it. Nick's right. And <laughs> it's a mastery. We're either growing or we're dying. Let's see. Uh, I can't help it. Let's see. What's the main result of all coins considered as securities? This is a good question. And this will be our last one. I got to get out of here, unfortunately. So I've always said this. Let's say, let's say Bitcoin becomes a commodity. Great, nothing changes. Everything's on the exchanges. 
everything else becomes a security. Now you have to register everything with a security. That means Ethereum number two down. They have to register with every single exchange. Every exchange that's out there has to register as, as uh, selling securities, just like what Robinhood does, because they sell securities, their stocks. They're going to pay a fine. Every single crypto that's out there that did an ICO is, a, is, is an unregistered ICO security uh, sell. They're going to pay a fine. The Fed's going to be happy. The government's going to be happy because they're going to make a boatload of money in a, in a one fell swoop. Even though this market is on under a trillion, and even Jamie Dimon said, is that even a real market if it's under a trillion? Got a point. So once that happens, then everything becomes a security and it's, and it's regulated. However, the, the thing again is that my question is this. If it's a security and we want to be able to transfer that security, like I can't transfer my Tesla stock or my Facebook stock out of Robinhood. Can I? No. So if, if that's a security and they say, well, it has to be overseen by X, Y, and Z, then if we want to do that, how can we start to use uh, wallets? And the next thing would be, well, I need to use this wallet because I need to transfer it. And also I need to use this security as a utility to pay for things, to move things out of my wallet. So how did you guys do that? And, and it, it, it's the same thing that, that came about with Apple. Apple was ticked off at uh, Coinbase and they shut down their, their wallet because they couldn't collect the 30% fee for uh, NFTs because they said, well, this is just a currency. It's not really. So again, um, when it all comes down, when it all comes down to it, if the securities come about, a lot of crypto products will collapse. They will consolidate. We'll see a lot of things. The big question is how can we move things around? especially when we need the actual utility part. And actually, let's also think about this. Let me show you one thing. Damn it, that's not it. If I go to World Mobile Token, and there was this, okay, you should be able to see my screen now. So, like, this isn't a security. So people are using the World Mobile Token, which is built on Cardano, to give them telecommunications and access via via cell service and they're using that as as a currency and a utility and right now they're going they've they've gone from uh the gigabytes to less than 100 gigabytes to now today using two point and this is in 24 hours they use 2.11 terabytes and 168 air nodes it's a separate thing so for me i'm like how can you classify that as a security as an investment contract because you're not using that to gain money, you're using that to access the network, which will give you access to the telecommunications and the data. I just, I just, it just boggles my mind how they, they think this is real. I mean, this is how it's gonna work out. Anyhow, that's for smarter people than me. That's it for today. Uh, a little bit quicker show today. I'm trying to speed things up. A lot of things are going on. Also, I forgot to, um, I had a talk last night with, um, with Aaron Bennett, uh, Cam Cruz, and Tiffany Fong. Uh, for the Celsius crew. And we got to talk about uh, the things that are going on with Celsius and the updates. And if you think that Celsius is going to use Bitcoin mining to come out of that hole, you got another thing coming. I will put that video out hopefully tonight, maybe early tomorrow. You can watch it. And uh, they do a fantastic breakdown. So I'll have that out. That's it. So look, that's it for today. If you like today's video, give it a thumbs up. Also consider subscribing. All things we talk about are time sensitive. That's it for today. So thank you so much for stopping by. I appreciate each and every one of you. I'll see you guys on the next one. Adios. Mm -hmm.